Hi guys, welcome back to another video on RabbitMQ. In this video, we're going to look at the C Sharp implementation of routing and topics that we talked about in the previous video where we gave the conceptual overview. In the last video, we went through this same implementation using Python. So if Python is a language you're more familiar with, please feel free to skip this video and check out the previous one. As usual, I will upload the sample code to my GitHub and I will leave the link in the description. So if you're interested in cloning it, please do so. So again, we're here in Visual Studio and I've created three different projects, the producer, the payments consumer, and the analytics consumer that will be used to set up our routing and our topic examples. So at the moment, you can see that the consumer code we have doesn't do anything. It's just the basic program template code. And what we're gonna to do to start off is we're just gonna copy in our code from our very first tutorial where we just published a message straight to a queue. So this way we don't have to go through creating a connection again, declaring queues, running our event received callback, and different things like that. So if you're unfamiliar with those basics, please check out a previous video. So we're just gonna make some small changes in the analytics consumer to use the routing concepts we learned about in the previous video. The first thing we need to do is we need to remove this queue declare. And we wanna replace that with an exchange.declare because we will be publishing to an explicitly declared exchange. And then we will declare a queue where the queue is assigned a name randomly from the server. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna say channel.exchange.declare. Need to give it an exchange name. So we'll just call it my routing exchange. And in this case, we want to use the exchange type direct rather than the exchange type fanout. And once we have our exchange declared, we next want to declare our queue. So again, we can use this. So queue name is equal to channel dot queue declare dot queue name. And this will create a queue where the server gives us a name and this will just store the server defined queue name in the queue name variable. The rest of the code we can leave more or less the same. We might just change some of our console write lines to explicitly say what service is printing out them. So analytics receive new message and the same in our consuming down here. So analytics consuming. And in our basic consume, we obviously no longer want to consume from the letterbox queue. We want to consume from the queue that we just declared above. So we'll change letterbox to the queue name here. And these are the main changes we wanna make in our analytics consumer or any consumer. The only thing that is remaining to be done is we want to bind this queue to this exchange using a explicitly defined binding key. So we can do this down here. So we can say channel.queuebind. First thing we need to do is pass the queue that we wanna bind. So that's our queue name here. And then the exchange that we wanna bind the queue to. So this is the my routing exchange. Finally, we wanted to find the routing key. And the routing key can be any string. Uh, so in this case, we'll just go simply for analytics only as our routing key or our binding key that we use to bind the queue to the exchange. So that's the code in our analytics consumer. We'll have very similar code in our payments consumer. So let's just copy the code from the analytics consumer in there and make some small changes. Again, the connection code will be the same. The exchange that we wanna to publish to that needs to be declared to consume from will also be the same. We can still declare our anonymous queue. And the only thing we might wanna change is we wanna change the routing key that's used to bind the queue to the exchange. So instead of analytics only, we will have payments only. And we'll change these two console write lines to instead of analytics, say payments. So this way we've got the payments consumer and this payments consumer queue bounds to the my routing exchange using the payments only routing key. And we've got the analyst consumer and the analyst consumer queue bound to the my routing exchange using the analytics only routing key. So let's open up our producer program.cs and again, we'll copy in the code from our very first original example here to get started. So again, the connection code and stuff will be just duplicated. So we don't need to worry about explaining that here. We need to make similar changes that we did in the consumers to this producer. So we need to first declare our exchange. So in case the consumers haven't already declared it before the producer starts, that it is declared here. So exchange declare the exchange and the exchange name again, we can copy from our consumers. It should be the same, my routing exchange and the type and the exchange type will be direct. 
we don't need to declare a queue in the producer as all the consumers should have declared their own queue already. We'll just change what our message says. So instead of this is my first message, we'll say this message needs to be routed. Okay, and we'll do the usual body encoding. And in our basic publish message, we don't want to publish to the default exchange and the letterbox queue. We want to publish to our my routing key exchange and we want to pass it a routing key that we want to use. So this could be one of the routing keys that we defined in either our payment service or analytics consumer. So if we take the routing key analytics only and use that in our basic publish, this message will only be consumed by the analytics consumer. While if we passed payments only, the message would only be consumed by the payments consumer. And those should be the only changes we need to make to get this working. So let's run the code and see if when we publish a message to the My Routing Exchange queue with the analytics only routing key, will it just be consumed by our analytics consumer? So let's open a new terminal and let's go CD into our analytics consumer and let's type .NET run to start our analytics consumer. And let's open a second terminal window. We'll rename our first to analytics. And the second one, let's CD into our payments consumer and run that using .NET run. That started our payments consumer. Okay, and let's rename it to payments. And finally, a third terminal window for our producer. So CD into producer. And let's run .NET run to publish our, this message needs to be routed message. And we'll also rename this to producer. Let's click into our payments consumer. And as you can see, as we expected, nothing has been consumed here. However, in our analytics consumer, we can see we actually have received that message as the routing key that we used in our producer only matches the routing key that is used in the analytics consumer. If we change the routing key from analytics only to payments only and rerun our producer using .NET run, we send another message into our system. And we can see it's not received by the analytics consumer. This is the original message published in our original .NET run, but the payments consumer has now received the message. So when we change the routing key to payments only, only the payments consumer will receive the message. Taking a quick look in the RabbitMQ management portal, we can see we have our My routing exchange declared here. If we click into it, we can see that it has two bindings and it gives the routing keys here. So payments only bound to this queue and analytics only bound to this queue. If we go back to our two consumers and add a second binding, remember a queue can have multiple bindings. And in this case, instead of the routing key payments only, we might add the routing key both, again with the same exchange that we're using. And we add this binding also into our analytics consumer. And then we restart both consumers. And then if we go into our producer, change the code to send the message with the routing key both, and then .NET run it, we'll send this message, and this message should be routed to both the payment service, which we can see here, and the analytics service, which we see here. So we can send messages to one or more service using these routing keys. So now that we've looked at how to use routing, and the direct exchange, let's take a look at how to use topics and the topic exchange. So to demonstrate this, I've added a third consumer called user consumer, and I've just created a .NET console application with the RabbitMQ library installed in it. We'll start off with the same consumer code in the user consumer that we had for our analytics consumer using routing here, and let's make some small changes to this to support the use of topics. So the first thing we need to do is we need to use a different exchange type. So we need to use the topic exchange type. And because RabbitMQ won't let us change the properties of an exchange once it's already been declared, we need to declare a new exchange. So let's call the exchange my topic exchange instead of my writing exchange. And let's also just change in these two console write lines analytics, let's say user instead. And then we also want to change how the queues are bound to the exchange. So remember when using a topic exchange, we can use the hash and the star wildcards to support 
different functionality when routing messages from exchange to our queues that are bound to it. So let's bind from the my routing exchange to the my topic exchange. And instead of having the routing key analytics only, let's have the routing key user dot hash. And this means that this consumer or this queue will receive any message that starts with user dot, no matter what comes after it. So anything that starts with user will be consumed by the user consumer here. And let's make similar changes in the analytics consumer. So we want to change the exchange from my routing exchange to my topic exchange. Let's delete one of our bindings. Let's change the exchange type to topic. Let's bind to the my topic exchange instead of the my routing exchange. And let's change the routing key from analytics only to star.europe.star. So this means that this queue will receive any message that begins with a, a word and then is dot Europe and then ends with dot a word. These are wildcards, so these can be any two words as long as Europe is the word in the middle and there is one word before it and one word after it, this queue will receive the message. If there are more than one word before Europe or more than one word after Europe, this will not receive it as stars do not have the same functionality as hashtags. They only match a single word. And finally, let's make the changes in our payments consumer as well to support topics. Change the exchange name to my topic exchange. Just delete this second binding for now. Exchange type to topic. And then in our existing binding, let's bind to the topic exchange and let's change the routing key to hashtag dot payments. So this means that any message that ends in dot payments will be received by the payments consumer, no matter how many parameters or how many words come in front of it. So it could be something like users.europe.payments or users.payments or something even really long like users.q.europe.england.payments. No matter how many words come before, as long as it ends in payments, this binding will pick it up and it'll be routed to our payments consumer. So now that we've made the changes in our three consumers, let's go in and make some changes in our producer to support the use of topics. Similar changes as before, when we're declaring the exchange, we wanna use the my topic exchange name and we wanna use the exchange type topic. And instead of this message needs to be routed, let's add a message that's slightly more descriptive. So we might add a message that says something like a European user paid for something, say. Instead of calling a message, let's call it user payments message. We wanna follow the same flow as before, so we want to encode it and user payments body and this is what we want to publish the user payments body and we don't want to publish it to the my routing exchange anymore we want to publish to the my topic exchange and the routing key we use might be something like user.europe.payments so this kind of represents that this message is for a user in the european region and it's something to do with payments so let's have a look and see which of our consumers would actually consume this user.europe.payments message the analytics consumer would consume it because if we look here, the middle word is Europe and beginning and ending it is one word that in this case of this binding key can match anything. So that would be a match. Our user consumer would also match it because it begins with user and ends in any number of parameters. So that would match it as well. And our payments consumer would also match it because it ends in payments and begins with any number of other words. So all three would actually match this routing key. And to demonstrate, let's actually send a second message in as well. So let's copy this four lines down underneath it. And instead of a European user paid for something, the message might be something like a European business ordered goods. So instead of user payments message, let's just call it business order message. business order body as well. Same thing as usual. That's what we want to publish. And that's what we want to say we've sent. We want to publish to my topic exchange as well, but we want to change the routing key from say user Europe payments to business dot Europe dot order. Okay, so we should have everything set up in our producer to send these two messages on two different routing keys. 
and our three consumers should be set up to now receive various different messages depending on the routing key they have. So let's open a couple of terminal windows and start our code. So let's cd into the analytics consumer and run that. So the analytics consumer has started. Let's rename that to analytics. Let's cd into the payments consumer and start that. Payments. Let's open another terminal window, cd into the user consumer, start that. And finally, let's add a fourth terminal window for our producer. And let's run the producer. So we can see the producer has sent two messages. Let's look at our different services and see which received them. So we can see, as expected, the user service received a European user has paid for something. And what about the second message we sent? So we sent the second message with the routing key business Europe order. Why didn't the user consumer receive this? And it's because it was sent with the routing key business Europe order. So it didn't begin with user. So this is why this user service or user consumer only receives the first message. Let's have a look at the payments. Again, this only received the European user has paid for something. So let's have a look at why. Again, comparing the routing key that is bound between the exchange and the queue with the routing key we sent in the message. This binding will only match messages that end in payments. In this case, the message ended with order, so this won't match it. So that's expected as well. And finally, let's look at our analytics consumer. This actually received both messages because both messages were sent with Europe in the middle and one parameter before and after and the analytics consumer binding key is set up to match that. So I hope this video and the previous conceptual overview of routing and topics has given you a good idea of how to use routing and topics in your RabbitMQ code. In the upcoming videos, we'll look at a couple of more details around different patterns in RabbitMQ and some of its more advanced features. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel for more RabbitMQ content.